Assalamu alaikum guys, welcome to another video. This is also a special one because we are going into another realm of programming and this video we will be learning the concepts of uh, object-oriented programming from now. So without further ado, let's go to Xcode or any other IDEs you have. Now in this we will be learning two different things that is structures and then we have classes. They're, both are uh, essentially the same thing. In structures, uh, all the members are uh, public by default. And in classes, we have private. What does that mean? We'll come to that in a minute. So, uh, I, if I wanted to create a structure. Now, uh, for those who don't know anything about it, uh, just consider that you are going to create your own data type now. So how you're going to do that, you're going to create a struct, a structure with a struct keyword and then you're going to write its name. And if I want to write the name of that uh, structure, I should be, it's a standard that I should write the first, uh, K, uh, first letter uh, in uppercase form because it's, a, uh, what do you say? it's the standard that is followed and always put a statement terminate terminator at the end of the data type uh, that you create you are creating so if I'm creating a vehicle we need to stop programming and start about start thinking what does a vehicle have what are its characteristics so a vehicle can have a number of tires so number of tires I will be using short because this is the point we want to create our program as efficient as we want as we can so I'm here saving two bytes by declaring short instead of an integer because no vehicle can have 32,000 tires so actually this is the range of short very short data type it can have uh, the numbers up to 32,000 uh, in it if it's a signed one and 32,000 positive and 32,000 in the negative side so you can have 64,000 numbers inside uh, that's a approximation only uh, if you want to see the number you can uh, check on, on Google uh, now we have a short now let's name it number of tires so this is it we declared and this is camel casing you uh, use first case in a small in the second case or uh, second on the other numbers uh, other words you use the first letter always capital so you have uh, what you say ease in read so num of tires you are not confused then a vehicle can have a color so for a color we need to have a string so color string is uh, color and then we want to know uh, it's std so here we are then we have a number of tires and seating capacity it's short then we have again camel casing seating capacity so here we are we created our own data type which has number of tires we have it has color it has a seating capacity so this is it if I wanted to initialize this vehicle, I would just uh, type in vehicle and then I will name this vehicle, say V1, all the rules that apply to, uh, to, apply to naming uh, variable also applies to naming your data types and the functions. So V1, uh, it's, it's declared, now V1 dot, uh, now this dot notation is used to access its members. Uh, this number of tires, colors, and seating capacity are the members of this vehicle class. V1 dot color, and I'm going to uh, uh, initialize it with. I'm going to initialize it with the red, and then statement terminator. Then, if I wanted to initialize my number of tires, I'm going to use uh, four, and if I wanted to initialize my seating capacity. I'm going to initialize it as well with the 5. So uh, if you wanted to see what's inside you can use the same notation as we are using from our day 1 v1 now if I wanted to see it's now if I wanted to uh, see what's inside v1 like I used to see integers uh, I cannot really do that. Build started. So build failed. Invalid, uh, invalid operands to binary expression 
because we haven't uh, overloaded this operator yet now. It's another concept. I'll teach you later. So if uh, if I wanted to see something inside, I can just v one dot uh, color. So if I wanted to see build the color, started. build success. And the color is red. If I wanted to see the seating capacity, I can put a dot again. Number of tires. Uh, sorry. Dot seating capacity and run build the program. Started. And you can see the seating capacity is five in its output here. So this is how you initialize the data members of our structures. If I wanted to teach you about classes, it's pretty simple. This is public by default. Let's go ahead and declare it as a class. And if I do that, build started. So you see, I get these errors, and what these errors say is color is private, number of tires is all private, seating capacity is a private, and seating capacity is a private member of vehicle class. That means I cannot access it. If I, if you wanted to see this one, you can just write v1 dot in. For those of you who are uh, programming in Xcode, you can see the strike through of uh, is appearing here so that means we cannot access the this data type because it's a class and the the members are public uh, not public private by default so you cannot use it for the other IDEs they are intelligent enough and they will not be showing you these data these members color number of seating capacity the, this will not be shown to you so you, there are less chances of doing a mistake committing a mistake over there so if I wanted to use class and if I wanted to uh, use these members as uh, as a public so I would just write public and put a colon in the front and now you see all these errors are gone because I explicitly told my compiler that all these members are my public members that means I can access them outside the scope of this class so it doesn't create the problem so now you know that we can use uh, structures or classes uh, anyone we want so if I wanted to use structures classes I would just go ahead and do it uh, private so my vehicle structure will be behaving like a class now this time so all those error appears as if I were programming with a class. So it's much, uh, much, uh, what do you say, advised to use class. So it's just one keyword that you remember. Save your hard disk. That is in your brain. And explicitly, always explicitly mention that you want to use these members as a public or private. So this is how you do it. Start. Second thing I want to teach you today is there is a method that instead of you know it's it's really tiring to access each of these members. Now say you are preparing a program for your library. So what will you do? You are going to initialize each of the data members explicitly by saying that I'm going to v uh, say if that variable was called l. So l dot shelves is equal to the number of shelves then l dot members is equal to number of members you have l dot number of books and then each name each book will be uh, initialized by you so that's really tiring in this case we have uh, uh, we have another method so when we use that it's advised to use them private because now we no longer need to access these data members outside the class scope so let's just erase them and use that, met that method. So that is the method called constructor. Uh, by the way, any function you create inside the class is called a method, okay? Because that is a method to to uh, do uh, do functioning with your class. So I'm going to declare a method. So I need to close the scope of this private. To do that, I just am going to write uh, public. So anything that comes after this word public is public. Anything that comes after private is private. 
So if I wanted to exit, I can't create my constructor as private, guys, because if I create my constructor as private, how am I going to initialize all of these uh, members of this class? So this uh, thing you need to remember here is every constructor, now you see, every constructor has the same name as its class name. So constructor and use them as, and they don't have, uh, uh, don't put your return type here so use constructors now each class has its own uh, default constructor I'll come to that in a minute so this is my constructor here uh, just like a method consider yourself making a function similar to that without return type and the parameters will be you know that we have to initialize a short another string and then short so short then we have to, what do we name this short? This is number of tires, say not. Then we have colors, so std, then string, then say these colors for col. You can create, uh, I'll just uh, do that in a minute. So then we have another short, and short is equal, not equal short and then name it seating capacity say SC and in this one you are going to access uh, all these members say number of tires now um, your IDE is going to uh, identify because you are inside this class so when you're inside this class you can access these uh, members so when you have number of tires you can access it as it is and initialize it number of tires same as uh, sorry same as above then put a statement terminator then access the second quant the second member that is color color then uh, initialize it with col then you have seating capacity and initialize it with sc so here we are we have created our constructor now, when you want to create a member, uh, not a member, an object of this vehicle class, what you need to do is write vehicle and then name this vehicle, say V, and pass your parent because we have created our own, our own constructor. So that default constructor that was inside this class by default uh, has been removed because we have provided our own constructor so C++ isn't going to compiler isn't going to available one for us so now we have only one way is that we use this constructor because this is the only one way to initialize all of these quantities these number of tires colors and seating capacity so to access this constructor just write parent the uh, parenthesis and start giving the literals you want to assign these uh, assign to these uh, members to now uh, the first one is short which is number of tires so number of tires is four then we have color and color is a string so give it a string which is now it's blue then we have seating capacity which was five so we have initialized all of our all of uh, the variables we had now remember Build we cannot started. see these values inside the variable unless we provide a method to do so okay so no, nothing's output so to to see what's actually stored in them we need to provide a method so let's just call this method print vehicle and remember that camel casing uh, camel casing doesn't apply on this uh, constructor because it's going to be the same as the name of your class so print vehicle or name it anything you want it's a uh, and uh, it's going to be because it's a function it's going to be void okay now uh, in this I will write all the necessary statements that are required by this class to see out the number of tires number of tires and then std and dl 
I'll just copy paste the whole thing to save time and then access these individually and change them color and then seeding capacity so you see if I wanted to see uh, now print vehicle is a function that is inside the vehicle class agreed so if I wanted to use this I will be using dot notation so v dot print vehicle and just run the program and let Don't me magic start it. So you see uh, four blue and five. So if you want to do format, uh, do some formatting here, you can just write number of tires. So build started. Everything seems good. Number of tires four. So similarly, you can just uh, do the same with color is and then we have our seating capacity now all of this is for our user to make him happy build started otherwise we know that the first it was going to print a uh, number of tires blue and then seating capacity which is 5 so this is the print function that we've provided. So more you uh, try to put in your vehicle into complex mode, the more, the more you can develop it. Uh, this was it for today's video. Go ahead and create your own data types and uh, you can create maybe a structure or a class for your school, for your friends, for your laptop, anything you want. Uh, just follow this basic simple things whenever you're naming a class take a minute and uh, think what are actually the mem what should be the members inside and always use the appropriate members because uh, you see a vehicle can be anything it can be a car it can be a bike it can be a cycle so anything so uh, try to make it generic so uh, in our Later, in a later program, we'll learn how to further cut it down and uh, make it a car class, a truck class, and a ship class. So anything you want to create. But first, try to uh, if I, if you wanted to just for example, if you wanted to create a structure class for a person. So we know that what are the characteristics of a person a person has a name so std name which is going to be a string sorry string and the string is going to be from standards so a person has a name he has a height a height can be stored into short so short is h e i g h t height and what oh sorry what have I done here? You can uh, what a person has. Uh, he has a job. So string job std string, and he has a job, and he has uh, he has a religion. A religion, and he has std string again, and then religion. He has his uh, country's national identity card number, CNIC number. So you can put, uh, you can make the class as generic as you want. So in the end, you are going to declare all your data members as private. All your methods, which are actually the functions, public because you are going to need those functions in your main function or in any other function you are making in global scope. Uh, we'll come to that in, a ma uh, in later videos so this was it uh, I think it's not as complex as it looks and not too difficult it's very easy uh, you see we haven't done a lot here so this is our whole class these are its members these are its methods 
And remember one thing, whenever you're, dec uh, you're trying to make a constructor, the constructor doesn't have a return type because it's not a method, it's not a function. It constructs, it gives the value to the members from, our, uh, from a caller function. So this was it for today's video. Uh, go ahead and practice this program. Till then, keep smiling, spread smiling, seek smiles, and uh, spread smiles. Allah Hafiz.